My last video garnered a lot of great feedback with ideas on enhancements on how to improve the free audio preview at all. If you haven't yet watched that video, I forgive you, and I will add a link in the description where you can learn about the great attribute on Open Asset and claim your free tool code. But make sure to watch this video as well, as you won't want to miss this enhancement pointed out by Mr. X and FM Productions in the comments. Now, I use this tool for listening to sound effects, so it hadn't dawned on me that if you were to use it for a longer audio, say a piece of music or ambience, then it couldn't actually be stopped easily once started. Well, this just won't do, so let's correct that, shall we? So let's dive right into the code. As a quick reminder, we have the amazing attribute on open asset, which gets called whenever someone double clicks an asset in the project view and enables us to override the opening functionality that Unity performs. In this case, by not launching the audio clip in the default application on our computer, but instead previewing it in the editor. This preview is done with this piece of code that uses reflection and a little bit of hackiness to get us access to the audio utility methods found in the depths of the Unity engine code base. Now, as stated, we want to enable the ability to stop a preview if playing. So we need more of this hacky functionality, which word of warning can and has changed before. So let's take a sneak peek behind the Unity engine code base by adding a breakpoint to our existing code and looking inside this type so that in future, you know how to do things if they change. We add the breakpoint by clicking to the side of our code and then clicking on the attach to Unity button on the top toolbar. If you don't have this toolbar button and you're using Visual Studio, you'll need to get the Unity plugin installed before you can do this functionality. And also, if you're interested in a deeper dive into breakpoints and debugging, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a video on it in the future. Now that's attached, we go back to Unity and we select to play one of our audio clips. This will then break at the breakpoint we have selected and allow us to do our inspection. We hover over the type and expand the dropdown. Here we will select the base option and then the option declared methods. As we can see, we have a multitude of other functionality to take advantage of, but I'm only interested in two other methods. In particular, is preview clip playing and stop all preview clips. So let's build those out with a little copy paste job from what we have already done. We'll take this play preview clip, we'll copy, we'll paste it down here. Now we're gonna call this is preview clip playing. Now this doesn't actually take in anything, so we won't need that there and we won't need any of this here or fact that it doesn't take it doesn't need an audio clip it just needs to know is a preview clip playing now this actually has a return and we'll need to return from the method here and we'll want to make sure we're returning a ball now the next thing to do is to change the method name that we're going to look up and we already saw what it was is preview clip playing brilliant so let's do that again, and this time for the stop. So this one doesn't actually return, so we don't need to return anything. And this one is called stop or preview clips, which happens to be the name of the functionality, as we saw. So those are the two functions. That's great, but we need to alter the calling code. We will need to store the previous selected audio files identity so that we know if we have double clicked on the same asset. So let's store the instance ID for the audio we play for comparison later. We will create a static int and let's call this something like last played audio clip ID. And we'll just set that to null because we won't have anything to start off with. So where we've got the play preview clip, after this, we're going to put in the recording of the actual audio clip ID. So audio clip dot get instance ID. And that's all we need to do to keep an ID of the audio clip. Now we want to know if the preview clip is playing. If it's not, well, then we can just play the audio file. However, if it is, then we want to stop all the clips playing and play the new clip if it's not the same as the previous one. So we will say if is preview clip playing to see if the preview clip's playing. 
And if it's not actually playing, well, then we don't care about stopping anything. We'll just play the next preview clip, even if it was the same as the previous one, because we might be repeating it to just make sure we're correct in our assumption about using that particular audio clip for whatever we're going to use it for. But if an audio clip is playing, then we want to stop all preview clips. We don't want to play audio over itself. And then we want to only play the new audio clip, the new one that's actually been sent in from this open asset, if it's a different audio clip. Because if it's already playing and it's the same audio clip, we're obviously only interested in stopping it. So we'll check that there has been a value set and we'll check that that last value is not the same as the audio clip we're now looking at playing. So get instance ID, there we go. And if it's not the same, well, then it's time to play the preview clip. And there we have it. So let's check that works back in Unity. We'll start the music. And we can stop it by double clicking it again. Or we can interrupt it. Excellent. And there we have it. Special thanks to the devs in the comments for pointing out the enhancement, otherwise known as a mission, and everyone else who liked, subscribed, and joined in with the discussion.